A few days ago, Meta AI released Llama 2. Now, what's exciting about Llama 2 is that it's open source and it is currently the best performing open source model in a big variety of different benchmarks. Now, one of the things that I'm personally very excited about is when I see these new open source models being released, one of the first things I do is I try out as a conversational agent. That is a chatbot that is actually able to use tools and Every single time that I have tried this so far with other models, I've been pretty disappointed. They either cannot use tools at all, or they're just very unreliable. So this, will it work as a conversational agent benchmark has just become my personal go-to when these new models are released. It's my way of benchmarking where open source is compared to OpenAI models, which generally speaking, GPT 3.5, Text Image 003, and especially GPT 4, they are pretty capable as conversational agents. And what I find in real world use cases is that conversational agents are the future of how we interact with large language models. Having a, a simple chatbot that just talks to us is great, but it's limited. It doesn't have the flexibility in access to external information that a conversational agent will have and it cannot use tools like you know a python interpreter that a conversational agent can use so that for me is super important and finally with llama 2 we have a model that has actually passed that test i fairly quickly managed to sort of prompt engineer my way to getting a llama 2 model the fine-tuned chat version of Llama 2 to work as a conversational agent, which I think is pretty insane. So what I want to do in this video is show you how you can do the same. So we're going to take a look at the biggest Llama 2 model, it's the 70B parameter model. We're going to quantize it so that we can fit it onto a single A100 GPU. I'm actually going to be running all of this on Colab so you can actually go ahead and, and run the same notebook. With this approach, we're going to be able to fit that 70 billion parameter model into at a minimum 35 gigabytes of GPU memory. Uh, but actually after multiple interactions, it kind of pushes its way up to more like 38 gigabytes, which is still not that much for such a performant model. Now let's just dive into how we can actually do this. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is actually sign up and get access to these models. It's pretty straightforward, it doesn't take that long. So what you can do for this is head on over to huggingface.co slash meta dash llama and you want to go over to the meta website here. So we click on that and we just want to request access to the next version of llama. So you fill that out and for me, I got a response almost instantly uh, through using two different emails. And uh, basically they're gonna send you something like this. So it's just, okay, you're all set, start building with Llama 2. Also gives you model weights that are available. This is not every single Llama 2 model. There is also a 34 billion parameter model, which they have not finished testing yet. So that hasn't been released just yet. But the one that we are going to be using is this Llama 2 70B chat. So on Hugging Face, we need to go to Llama 2 70B chat HF, okay? This is the model that we want to be using, okay? So you'll see that there's this access Llama 2 on Hugging Face. Uh, one thing you need to be aware of here is that, well, actually it says it right here. Your Hugging Face account and email address must match the email you provide on the Meta website. So. A minute ago when we entered our details on the Meta website, make sure you use the email that you also use on Hugging Face. So once you've done that, you can click this, you can submit, and as long as those emails line up, you will get access fairly quickly. Now, one thing that you will need is, one, we have to wait for that access to come through, but we also need to go down over to our profile 
we go to settings and we need to get an access token. So this will allow us to download the model within our code, okay? So we, you will actually need to create a new token. I'm just gonna call this Meta Llama and we just need read permissions, okay? So with that, we generate a token and I'm just going to copy that. So this is a notebook that we're going to be working through in this video. There will be a link to this at the top of the video right now, so you can follow along if you like, although I will just pre-warn you that uh, parts of this notebook can take a little bit of time, particularly when you're downloading the model. So uh, with that in mind, I wouldn't even necessarily recommend running this on Colab because you're going to have to <laughs> re-download the model um, like every day that you use this, which is not ideal. And it's fairly expensive so you you should probably run this on your like local computer if you have a, a good gpu or on a cloud service somewhere okay so yeah uh, we come down to here you'll need to enter your hugging face api key in here and let me just come down and show you what is happening okay so there's a fair bit of code that is just kind of initializing the model here for us and as i mentioned this download of the model this download and initialization of the model just take a bit of time so this has actually been running now for one hour and 10 minutes or a little bit longer and i'm not expecting it to finish too soon although i'm hoping it will not take too much longer uh, but essentially we're going to be waiting a while for the model to download but let's come up here and just kind of go through that code that we've used to initialize it first all right so we're doing a pip install of all the libraries that we're going to be using we do need all of these okay hugging face transformers then we have like these libraries and these libraries are basically so we can run large language models and also optimize how we're running those and we also have Langchain. So later on in the notebook, we're going to be using Langchain to create that conversational agent. So come down to here. What we need here is the large language model, a tokenizer for the large language model, and also stopping criteria object, which is more of an optional item, I would say for this model. But let's talk about those, the LLM at first. So. The LLM, we have this model ID. This is coming from Hugging Face. So if we come up here again, we can type in Llama2, and we see that there's all these different model IDs. The one that we're using is this one here. Okay, so we have our model ID. Here, we're just checking that we have a GPU available. Here, we have this bits and bytes config object. Uh, I've spoken about this in previous videos, so I'm not gonna go too into depth, but essentially what we're doing here is we're minimizing the amount of GPU memory we need to store the model. Now, this is a 70 billion parameter model. So let's just do some very quick maths here. So 70 billion parameters. Each of those parameters using the standard data type is 32 bits of information, okay? So the standard data type is a float 32, so float 32, and that is 32 bits of information. Within each byte, there is eight bits of information. So we can actually calculate how much memory we need to store that model. Okay, it is just the params by the data type uh, divided by eight. Okay, and that gives us uh, this many bytes of information, which is 280 gigabytes, which is a lot, right? That's many, many um, GPUs, many A100s. Single A100, I think, is 40 gigabytes. So yeah, we need, we need a few of those. Now, by doing this bits and bytes quantization, we can minimize that. So 
what we're essentially doing is switching from a float 32 data type to an int 4 data type. Okay, and that contains four bits of information. Okay, so now each one of those parameters is not 32 bits, it's four bits. So let's calculate that. Uh, we have int 4 divided by 8, which gives us this. So that is 35 gigabytes of information. Now, that's not precise because when we're doing this quantization method, if we just converted everything into int 4, basically we would lose a lot of performance. This works in a more intelligent way by quantizing different parts of the model that essentially don't need quite as much precision. Then the bits that do require more precision, we convert into 16-bit floats. So it will be a little bit more than 35 gigabytes, essentially, but we're going to be within that ballpark. So that's great and allows us to load this model onto a single A100, which is pretty incredible. Then what we need to do is we load the model config from Hugging Face Transformers. Because we're downloading that from Hugging Face Transformers, we need to make sure we're using our authorization token, which you will need to set in here. And then we're also going to download the, the Llama 2 model itself. Now, we need to have trust remote code in there because this is a big model and there is a, there's custom code that will allow us to load that model. Uh, you don't need that for all models on Transformers, but you do need it for this one. We have the config object, which we just initialized up here. And we also have the quantization config, which we initialized up here. Device map needs to be set to auto. And we again need to pass in our authorization token, which we do here. Okay, and then after that, we switch the model into evaluation mode, which basically means we're not training the model, we're going to be using for inference or prediction. And then after that, we, we just wait. So this is almost done now. So it's, I think it's just finished downloading the model. Now we're going to need to wait for it to actually initialize the model from all of those downloaded shards that we just created. So I will see you in a few minutes when that is finished. Okay, so everything has now loaded and initialized so we can get on with the rest of the code. So we need a tokenizer. Tokenizer, it just converts plain text into basically what the model will be reading. So I just need to make sure I define this and I can rerun that. So yeah, converts plain text to tokens, which a model will read. And then we come down to the uh, stopping criteria of a model. Now, with the smaller models, this is pretty important. With this model, I would say less so. But we can add this in anywhere as a precaution. Basically, if we see that the model has generated these two items, which are basically, this is from like a chat log, so we'd have the assistant, it would type a reply, and then if it moves on to the next line and starts generating the text for the human response, well, it's generating too much text and we want to cut it off, okay? So we have that as a stopping criteria, and we also have these three backticks. The reason we use these three backticks is because when we are using Llama 2 as a conversational agent, we actually ask it to reply to everything in essentially markdown of a JSON output. So we'll have it reply to everything in this format. Okay, and then in here we'll have like an action, which is something like use a calculator. and also the action input. Okay, so it would be like two plus two, right? So that is why we're using this or including this within the sub list, right? Essentially, once we get to here, we want the chatbot to stop generating anything. But as I said, with this model, it doesn't seem to be that necessary. So. You can add it in there as a precaution, but actually what I'm going to do is just skip that for now. Actually, you know, I don't necessarily need that to be in there. 
If you do want to include that in there, what you'll need to do is just uncomment that and you'll, you'll have that in there. But yeah, I'm not going to initialize it with that. If we do see any issues, then we'll, we'll go back and run that with the stopping criteria included. So this is just initializing the text generation pipeline with hugging face. So we can now ask it to generate something. So this is a question that I've used a few times in the past. We just want to make sure that it is actually working on the hugging face side of things. So can this hugging face initiated model generate some text? And it will take a little bit of time. As I said before, this is exciting because it is finally able to at least at a very basic level act as a conversational agent. In terms of speed and hardware requirements, it is not the most optimal uh, solution, at least not yet. But that's something that can be solved with more optimized hardware or just kind of throwing a load of hardware at it, at least on the time side of things. So that will take a little while to run and we see that we get this response, which I think is relatively accurate. I haven't, I haven't read through it, but it looks pretty good. Okay, then what we want to do is right now we have everything hung face. We now want to transfer that over into a line chain. So we're going to do that by initializing this hung face pipeline uh, object from line chain and initializing it with our pipeline that we initialize up here. Okay, and then we just treat that as the, the LLM. So we run that, we can then run this again, and this will produce a pretty similar output to what we got up here. Okay, and we can see we get kind of similar output. Uh, it's, it's just telling us the same sort of stuff, but with more text. Okay, cool. Now what I want to do, come down to here, we have everything initialized in line chain. So now what we can do is use all of the tooling that comes with line chain to initialize our conversational agent. Now, conversational agent, as I mentioned before, it's conversational. That means it has some sort of conversational memory and it is also able to use tools. That is kind of the advantage of using a conversational agent versus just a standard chatbot. So we initialize both of those. So conversational buffer window memory. This is going to remember the previous five interactions. And we're also just going to load a LLM math tool. It's a calculator. Okay. So we initialize both of those. And then here we have what is an output parser. We don't need this for this model. It's you can have it in there as a precaution again, if you like, but for the most part, I've found that it doesn't actually need this with good prompting. So essentially what I would do usually with this output parser is if the agent returns some text without the correct format, so without that JSON format that I mentioned earlier, I would assume that that's trying to respond directly to the user. All this output parser does is kind of reformats uh, that into the correct JSON-like response. But as I said, we can ignore it. We don't need it necessarily for at least the tools that we're using here. Maybe in a more complex scenario, it might come in more use. So uh, if you did want to use that, you would just uncomment that and run it. But as mentioned, let's skip that and just see how the agent performs without it. Again, it's just like a precaution. Okay, so we initialize the agent here. We're using this chat conversational react description agent. And yeah, this is kind of standard agent initialization parameters. And what I wanna show you here is the prompt that we initially use. Now this prompt doesn't work very well, okay? One like this initial system prompt is super long. It's, it's, it's not that useful. And then we have the user prompt template here, which again, is super long and it, it doesn't work th that well. So I've modified those. Okay, so one thing that is slightly different or specific to Llama 2 is the use of these special tokens. So we have this, which indicates the start of some instructions, 
This, which indicates the end of instructions. This indicates the start of a system message. So that initial message that tells the chatbot or LLM how to behave. And this indicates the end of the system message. So we initialize our system message and we include that sort of initialization of the system message in there. And then we go through, we say, assistant is an expert JSON builder designed to assess a wide range of tasks. The intention here is to really uh, drill in the point that assistant needs to respond with JSON. Uh, we also mentioned it needs to respond with the action and action input parameters. And we can see an example of that in here. Okay. So in this example, I'm saying this is how to use a calculator. You need to say action calculator and what you would like to use with the calculator. Okay. And then we have some future examples in here. So we have just responding directly to the user. Uh, we need to use this JSON format. Uh, using calculator, again, use the JSON format. And we just go through and keep giving a few of those examples. Uh, at the end of system message, we put that end of system message token. And yeah, so we can, we can run that. And then we come down to here. And this is another thing that they found in the paper is that Llama 2 over multiple interactions seem to forget those initial instructions. So all I'm doing here is saying we have some instructions. So I'm adding those instruction tags in there and I'm summarizing, like giving a little reminder to Llama 2. Respond to the following in JSON with action and action input values. And we're just appending that or adding that to every user query, okay? So which we can see here. And then we just modify the human message prompt template. And what we end up with is this, which you can see down here, okay? So we're gonna have that with every human message, okay? So now we can actually begin asking questions. Um, I just ran this one, so hey, how are you today? Uh, we see that we get this output, right? Final answer, I'm good, thanks, how are you? That's pretty good. Um, let's try what is four to the power of 2.1. Okay, and we see that it's correctly using a calculator. It has the action input, which is four to the power of 2.1 in Python. Okay, and this interaction takes a little bit longer because there are multiple LLM calls happening here. So the first LLM call produces the, okay, I need to use a calculator and the input to that calculator. This is sent back to line chain and this is actually executed in a Python interpreter and we get this answer from that, okay? That is sent back to the assistant and based on that final answer, it knows that it can give the answer back to us. So the action is final answer. It looks like the answer is this, okay? So that is the output that we get there. Now let's use our conversational history and ask it to multiply that previous number by three. Let's run that. We can see the first item, so the calculator, it is being used correctly. So we have that 18.379 multiplied by three. Again, it's gonna take a little moment because it needs to then actually get the answer and generate a new LM response based on that answer. Okay, and then we get our answer and we have this 55.13 and that's what we get. So it looks pretty good. Now, I would say, as you saw, I mean, these answers where it's going through multiple steps, it's taking like a minute for each one. A lot of that time seems to be kind of spinning up a Python interpreter. It's not fully on the LM uh, in this case, but it does take a little bit of time. So. Naturally, that is probably one of the biggest issues with using Llama 2 at the moment. It takes a lot of GPU memory to run it. That comes with high costs. And especially if you're running it on a single GPU like we are with quantization, which slows the whole thing down, things are gonna take a little bit of time. But nonetheless, I think this looks really cool. What we've done here is a very simple agent. It's just using a calculator, 
we're not stress testing this. And honestly, if we want to start using other tools, I think we might run into some issues that require a bit more tweaking and prompt engineering than what I have done here. But I'm optimistic that we can actually use this for other tools. And when you consider that even GPT 3.5, even that model is not that good at just producing the JSON response when you use it as a conversational agent. It can, and it's, it can do it so reliably, uh, but it's not perfect. And the fact that Llama 2, an open source model that we're fitting on a single GPU is at least somewhat comparable to one of the best large language models in the world. I mean, I think that is pretty incredible. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. Uh, naturally, Llama 2 has only been around for a few days as of me recording this. We're probably going to see a lot of new models built by the community on top of Llama 2 appear within probably the next few days from now and especially in the next coming weeks and months. So that'll be very exciting to see where that goes. For now, I'm going to leave it there for this video. I hope this has all been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.